defend our land. Vigorously defend this nation in the name of Jesus. Vigorously defend this nation in the name of Jesus. Father, defend our land. Defend this nation in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 50, 34. It says, yet the Redeemer is strong. The Lord Almighty is his name. He will vigorously defend their cause so that he may bring rest to their land. But unrest to those who live in Babylon, unrest to the evil ones. I want us to ask that God will vigorously defend this country. Father, in the name of Jesus, vigorously defend this land, vigorously defend this nation. In the name of Jesus, defend this nation. Many things are wrong, so much Oh, Lord, defend this nation. Lord, bring rest to our nation. Bring rest to our land in the name of Jesus. Bring rest to this nation in the name of Jesus. Bring rest to our land, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Defend this land, O oh Lord. We do not want to live in fear anymore. Defend this land in the name of Jesus. Mazakatayara. Defend this land in the name of Jesus. Do you know that fear has extreme physiological effects? For those who are susceptible, they can actually have a heart attack. Lord, we do not want to live in fear again in this land. Lord, we do not want to live in fear again in this land in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Job eleven nineteen, 19, you will lie down and none will make you afraid. Lord, we want that to be our story henceforth in the name of Jesus. Let none make us afraid in our land in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring peace to Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring peace to our land in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to personalize that. You will lie down and none will make you afraid. Father Lord, I will lie down and none will make me afraid. You're praying for yourself now. We have left Nigeria. Yea, Lord, when I lie down to sleep, my sleep will be sweet in the name of Jesus. I will not be afraid of what is coming. Because I'll be surrounded by the peace of the Lord in the name of Jesus. He says, I'll grant peace in the land. You lie down and none will make you afraid. Lord, in our land, in our families, in, in our personal lives, Lord, grant unto us peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Over those situations that are worrisome, we ask for peace in the name of Jesus. You know what is worrying you? You're not discussing that with anybody. You want to begin to decree the peace of God over that in the name of Jesus. We will lie down and none will make us afraid in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God come over our lives in the name of Jesus. Over our families in the name of Jesus. Before we go this morning, I want us to also ask for mercy. You want to pray for mercy for this fourth month, this second quarter that has just started. You want to ask that the mercy of God will accompany you. The Bible says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Not everyone gets it. Look around you, fingers are not equal. Not everyone gets it. But if you cry out this morning, the Lord will hear you. You want to ask, that this journey of April, mercy will accompany you. Father Lord, this morning I decree that mercy will accompany me in the name of Jesus. Mazuza, ta, 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 ta. Father, in this month, let my life be built on mercy. In the name of Jesus. In this quarter, let my life be built on mercy in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God overshadow my life in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God accompany me in this quarter. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your mercy lead me in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy 
lead me on in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy accompany me this month in the name of Jesus. Zakato zebra gazu zedade, mazu ziza zota yada da da da, mazu zikele lebra hazota ta yada da, mazu ntayele lehita zata ya. What is your heart desire? What is your heart cry this morning? You wanna speak? You wanna ask that the mercy of God will speak over that matter this morning? Lega zota yada da doza ta. Father, let your mercy accompany me this month. Let your mercy accompany me this quarter. Let the mercy of God make the difference in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God make the difference in the name of Jesus. In life, the mercy of God is a game changer. When he enters a situation, the story changes. You want to ask this morning that the mercy of God will enter into your situation in the name of Jesus. Father, let your mercy sort me out this quarter. In the name of Jesus, let your mercy sort me out this quarter. In the name of Jesus, let your mercy sort me out this quarter. In the name of Jesus. Over that matter, Lord, let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Concerning that matter, Father, let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Are you hopeless this morning? Are you saying it's been four days already smelling? Ah, Lord, concerning that smelling situation, let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Concerning that smelling situation, concerning that dead situation, let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God speak this morning. Let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Concerning that scary situation, over that scary situation, let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. You want to decree over your life this morning that, your mercy of, that the mercy of God will speak over your situation in the name of Jesus. I decree over myself as a prophet this morning. Mazutaya, that the mercy of God will speak in the name of Jesus. Ah, concerning you, concerning me, the mercy of God will speak in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God will speak in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God will speak in the name of Jesus. Mazukali kasuta yila kasuta ta ta ta. The Bible says we should decree a thing and it should be established unto us. The Bible says that he carries out the predictions of his prophets. Ah, in the name of Jesus, over that matter, let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Over that matter, over that situation, let the mercy of God make the difference in the name of Jesus. Over that scary situation, let the mercy of God turn things around in the name of Jesus. There's a young man here, I don't know who it is. The Lord says your problem is not unanswered prayers. It is disobedience. It says you are struggling with me. It doesn't look like sin, yeah, but disobedience is sin. It says you are struggling with me. It says just release yourself and you will see. Let mercy flow over this meeting in the name of Jesus. Over your children. Let mercy flow this morning. Let the mercy of God speak in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God accompany us through the journey of the second quarter in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God. It is the mercy of God that makes the difference. The mercy of God. Ah, the mercy of God. Let it speak over everyone here this morning in the name of Jesus. Let's just give God praise this morning. Give God praise this morning. We bless you, Lord. 
In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And we bless the name of Jesus this morning. Thank you for all his wonderful works in our life. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you. So this morning we have a short song to teach the church. We pray this song blesses your life as we sing in the name of Jesus. So the lyrics of the song goes thus: Pierce through me, cut through me, open me up, do your surgical work in me till I see like you see. May this song bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So it goes thus. sing it again after our main worship and worship praise and praise song. So let's move on. Ha. We bless your name, Jesus. My heart is singing, singing Sing it, sing it, sing it. My heart is singing, sing it, sing it. Hallelujah, sing it, sing it, sing it. My heart, my heart is singing, yeah. sing it, yeah. sing it. Hallelujah, Hallelujah sing it. Dancing, 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 
singing, singing, hallelujah, singing, 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 and my heart is singing, 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 hallelujah, singing, 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 my heart is singing, my heart is singing, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
for the Lord.
Hallelujah. So we'll go back to our previous song. Pierce through me. That song is wonderful. Allow yourself to um, swim through the songs. Hallelujah.
I wanna heal it to you hear Hey, I wanna feel like you feel I wanna know like you know
Worship him is worthy of our praise. Let's just worship the name of God this morning. Let's give him praise. Uh, let's worship him this morning. Let's give him praise. Our God is worthy. Our God deserves to be praised this morning. Our God is so faithful. I want you to open your mouth this morning and just bless the name of the Lord. Just worship God. Let's just worship God from the bottom of our hearts. Ah, this is the second quarter. God has been so faithful. If the Lord has been so good to you, if the Lord has been so faithful to you, if the Lord has been so good, despite all the challenges, despite all the circumstances, I just want you to open your mouth this morning and just bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship God from the bottom of our hearts this morning. Let the praise of God spring forth from the heart this morning. It's a privilege to stand before His presence. It's a privilege to stand before His presence this morning. For that we bless your name of God this morning. We lift up our hearts to your God this morning. We thank you, Lord, yes, for another day, yet for another month. We thank you, Lord, for all you have been doing, oh God, for us, oh God. As a church this morning, as individual this morning, as a nation and as a family this morning, we say, oh God, we are grateful, oh God, this morning. Yes, this morning, oh God, we have come to you, oh God, this morning. As we have seen this morning, oh God, that you do something in our life, oh God, this morning. We open up our hearts to you, oh God, this morning. We surrender our life to you, oh God, this morning. We want to see like you see. We want to feel like you feel. But I want to do like you do, oh God. We ask, oh God, as you are opened up this morning, oh God, that you fill us up, oh God, this morning, oh God. Do a surgical work in our lives, oh God, this morning. We come, oh God, with our broken hearts this morning. We come, oh God, with you, oh God, with our hearts lifted, oh God, this morning. That you do a surgical work in our life, oh God, this morning. We surrender our hearts to your God this morning. We ask, oh God, that we not go back the same way we came, oh God, this morning. Let your name be glorified in our midst, oh God, this morning. Touch us, oh God, this morning. Let us be blessed in your presence, oh God, this morning. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. For in Jesus' name, we have worship. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Praise the Lord. Praise. to be alive this morning I want you to shout hallelujah praise the Lord please let's be seated in his presence 
on behalf of the pastor, is away for another assignment. I welcome you all this morning to this glorious service. And I want you to wave to your neighbor and say, you are welcome to this morning service. You are welcome all. I just want us to relax because God has prepared a vessel to bless us with this morning. And I want to call on Brother Kempens to welcome our first time at this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. We are so happy that we've entered the second quarter of the year. God has a lot of things in stock for us, most especially in this church. Uh, we're happy, I'm happy to welcome you all to this service. And more importantly, I want to welcome some special set of people people who are worshiping with us for the first time on a Sunday morning like this. So if you are worshiping with us for the first time, can uh, signify by raising up your hand. Is there anyone okay? All right. Please, um, choir, please, can you welcome them in the Stone Church with us? song is composed for you. Please don't be in a hurry when you, the church is over. Uh, I would like to see you after the service. Um, a form will be given to you. Please fill them, fill your details. It's just for us to get to know you better. Um, and for whatever request you have, you can put it on the form. Um, so on behalf of our pastor who is not here, but um, who, uh, on behalf of our MB member of Stone Church, I will welcome you. Please sit back and enjoy the service, the rest of the service. Thank you. Once again, you are welcome, our brother. We, we are glad to have you in our midst this morning. Um, I want to call on the live flick stone for their special number this morning. Let's just give them a hand of applause as soon as they come out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let a living soul shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let a living soul shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's been a wonderful journey through the course of the year. And um, this is the um, fourth month of the year. And we want to thank God for um, every way he has helped us through the journey that he has brought us this far. And um, I don't know if there's anyone in the house this morning who just wants to give everything back to him just for him to take control of your ways. And I assure you that when God takes control and when God takes the will, he will direct you right. And I, bless, uh, I pray that you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All my obsessions, I want to lay them all down in your hands. Only your love. 
love is vital Though I'm not entitled Still you call me your child God, you don't need me But somehow you want me Oh, how you love me Somehow that frees me To take my hands off of my life And the way it should go Oh, God, you don't need me But somehow you want me Oh, how you love me Somehow that frees me To open my hands up And give you control I give you control I've had plans Shattered and broken the things I had opened fall through my hands. You have plans to redeem and restore me. You are behind and before me. Oh, help me believe. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how wow, you love me Somehow the free speech will take out of, of, of my life And the way it should go Oh, God, you don't need me But somehow you want me Oh, how wow, you love me Somehow the free speech will open my hands up And give you control So you are So this world has lost its grip on me. You want me. So my you want me. The king of heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how wow, you love me. Somehow the frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, oh, oh. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how wow, you love me. Somehow the frees me to open my hands up. And give you control. I give you control. I give you control. Oh, I give you control. Oh, oh, Lord, I give you control. Oh, you want me. Somehow you want me. The King of Heaven wants me So this world has lost its grip on me Hallelujah Praise Praise the Lord Yes, he asks that, oh God Take over our lives in Jesus' name With Jesus' joy, I want to call the vessel God has prepared to use this morning in the person of Brother Harvey, please let's just give God a praise even as he comes forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody glad to be in the presence of God this morning. Jam your hands together for the Most High. Glory to God. It's such a joy to have um, such a wonderful environment and a great father also. You know, I, I grew up in a, a kind of house where once my dad drives into the compound, everybody takes off. He was that kind of father. We were also scared of him. But you don't know what it's like when you have a father that gives you an enabling environment as a child. 
so that you can feel free to approach and tell him just about anything. Bless God for the life of our father. Can we appreciate him, though he's not here? And I'm grateful for this privilege he has given me this morning to share the word with you. My prayer is that God will help me this morning. Amen. Amen. Title of the sermon is Things to Watch Out For. Things to Watch Out For. As I run through some things, I will read two scriptures. Uh, some things I will highlight them. Some things I'm sure the Spirit will highlight for you as we go through several examples. Now, there are many aspects of life. Uh, if you people categorize, we have our work life. We have family life. Business life. Spiritual life. Um... Then there's a serving God life, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. And um, a lot of people say that it's just the last two that are spiritual, but really, no. God designed life to be spiritual on all fronts. He designed our work life to be spiritual, family life the same, our business life the same, spiritual life. He's particular about those who are in Christ Jesus, that every compartment of our life will be spiritual, because life is spiritual. And when we are connected to the Heavenly Father, he gives us a map for our life. Just follow me carefully. He also gives us a picture of our future. He will tell some of us things that will happen concerning our life in the days ahead. He gives us wisdom to be able to excel in this life. But sometimes it seems as if life is ordinary to some of us. Life is mundane. Life is not exactly under God's control because of the things you've been seeing happening in your life over the last couple of years. But it's only when we are not super conscious of him that we can see it like this. It's when we are not extra conscious of him that we view it this way. Because one of the first things you should note, the title is things you should note, God is always speaking. God is always speaking. The problem or the question is, are we listening? God is always speaking. And uh, maybe because of the distractions of the issues of life, we don't get to hear him exactly. We're going to... Look at the scripture, Genesis 49. Where a certain man, this, this was quite an interesting as I was reading it, as I was preparing. A man was going to die not too long from that current time. So he gathered all his grown children. And he said he wanted to tell them about their futures and how they will end up. So he gathered them, then... Interesting thing about the things he said about the 12 children, they were very accurate. You know, every spiritual parent, you should have that kind of accuracy concerning your children. If you are praying regularly for them, God will be able to tell you this one will be an engineer. This one may be a preacher. This one will go far. This one, you need to watch him. God gives specifics. Now, let's read... What happened with Jacob and the 12 sons? Genesis 49. I don't know if we can have it on the screen. We're just going to read some selective verses, not everything. I want to major on what he said about three of the sons. Genesis 49, starting from verse 1. Okay. And Jacob sent for his sons and said, come together, all of you, so that I may give you news of your fate in future times. Come near, O sons of Jacob, and give ear to the words of Israel, your father. Let's go. Reuben, you are my oldest son, the first fruit of my strength, first in pride and first in power. But because you were uncontrolled, the first place will not be yours, 
For you went up to your father's bed, even his bride bed, and made it unclean. Next verse. Now, this is our first emphasis that we'll go a little bit into detail. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Deceit and force are their secret designs. Next one. Take no part in their secrets, O my soul. Keep far away, O my heart, from their meetings. For in their wrath, another translation says, in their anger, they put men to death for their pleasure. Even oxen were wounded. Verse 7. A curse on their passion, for it was bitter. Another translation says, a curse on them because of their anger. And on their wrath, for it was cruel. I will let their heritage in Jacob be broken up, driving them from their places in Israel. Let's jump to verse 14. Look at the second one we want to examine. Verse 14. Issachar is a strong ass stretched out among the flocks. And he saw that rest was good and the land was pleasant. So he let them put weights on his back and became a servant. Let's now jump to verse 22, the last one. Verse 22. Joseph is a young ox whose steps are turned to the fountain. Can I get the King James translation? I need the King James translation for this particular one. Yes. Thank you. Joseph is a fruitful bough. Even a fruitful bough by a well. Whose branches run over the wall. That's a sermon on his own, but that's not where we're going. Emphasis is 23 to 25. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the almighty of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee? And by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. Now, he, he had predicted how the lives of his 12 sons will end up. God gave him, God opened his eyes. And he told them that this is what is going to, this is how your life will end up. Now, about Issachar, he said, Issachar, uh, the King James translation, verse 14 and 15. He said, Issachar was a burden bearer. That's how King James puts it. Issachar was a burden bearer. Uh, is as strong as couching down between two burdens. So one of the things, again, we need to take note of, we need to, Seriously be concerned about the lives of others. Maybe you are in an environment, your workplace, um, church, you hear there's a certain person that had a bad experience. Don't just let it fly by your ears. Uh, put yourself in their shoes. Empathize with them. Maybe if you see the person, uh, it's not that you should go and do like Nigerians do and say, ah, bros. I just say, this, it don't finish for you. Ah, how far? No. Go there with wisdom, bond with the person, take time to create an enabling environment where you can now start entering into discussions that trail around what the person is going through. Be concerned enough. Let me give you something that happened recently in our workplace. There's a lady that um, resumed in our facilities management team. She resumed early March, the first day at work. After she had a lovely time, she looked at the company and said, okay. We like say, these people make sense more. Then on her way home, she had a terrible bike accident. The bike man was unconscious. Her legs were wounded. So when she was in the hospital, my, um, cause I, I mean, admin, my colleague in admin, uh, one of those days, she said uh, that uh, she called this girl uh, and she spoke to her. Looks like she's getting better. I had heard for about two days that um, that had happened, but I was overwhelmed with so many things. She was getting better and that and that. 
Then she said that particular day, she had uh, called the driver. She was going to visit the girl in the hospital. She had been speaking to her mom. So uh, I looked at my colleague. Me, me that's heading at me. Uh, this girl wants to fall my handle. So I just shook my head. I, I, I gathered uh, my phone. I called the lady. I spoke to her. How are you feeling? Hello, my name is Harvey Obodo. I'm so, so, and so. So he said, oh, I'm getting better, sir. Blah, blah, and blah. Then this, my colleague, went another extra mile again. She typed a, a, a mail. She, she asked the hospital for the expenses, I think uh, almost 200000 Typed a mail, put it together. Now brought her laptop to me. He said, uh, I should look at, she wants to go and meet management, and she wants to tell them that they need to pay for this, that. Imagine what this girl would be th thinking. Her first day at work, she met this kind of biggie. In Africa now, you know now. Your first day at work, accident. You just say, eh, uh eh. -huh. God, they used to start tell me, oh, say, road's not there for this work. So she, I told her, they don't do this all the time. Oh. She said she would try. She said, okay. I reviewed it. She took it up. They actually agreed. They paid. So I think the girl's mother called somewhere along the line. She was so overwhelmed. Even if that girl, for instance, was considering not to come back because of the kind of experience on the first day at work, but because of the level of concern that was shown to her, she has resumed, she resumed, I think, middle of March. She's doing well now. He said, Issachar was bearing between two burdens. We should have... A lot of concern for our brethren, particularly those who are in the household of faith. Because people who have hearts like this, I wrote here, God protects them. God preserves them specially. Those who are burden bearers, those who are concerned about not just your issue, but about the issues of other people around you. Let's look at the second um, son. The one who will spend a bit of time is Joseph. Verse 5 to 7, talking about Simeon and Levi. He said a curse is on them because of their anger. Now I wrote here, a man or woman who is given to anger frequently stands the chance of their life being scattered or their life being stuck in one position. Now, there are three kinds of anger positions. Let's consider together. Uh, every human being will fit into one of the three. That's pretty much how we react when people have broken our spirit or hurt us deeply. The first kind of anger position are those who, when you upset them, they will cheer for you. They will let you know, uh, but I, I don't like what you did. Don't try this kind of thing. Uh, they will tell you outright. They may end up forgiving you. They may not end up forgiving you, but they will let you know outright, this is what you have done, that you have uh, really, really hurt them badly. Now, a digression from this is, whether you forgive or you don't forgive is based on four character makeups. I want to explain it in this way. Um, I had a sermon some years ago. Some white man from, I can't remember the country. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. This man described these four things Jesus said as four character traits. All thy heart, those who are very compassionate. All thy soul, those who are highly emotional people. All thy mind, those who are logical. All thy strength, those who have a lot of energy to just get in. In fact, they run before they think. <laughs> this, uh, he gave a scenario. He said, let's say there's a party going on. Just follow my line of thought. And um, someone was carrying plates. They wanted to serve. Maybe they, he was carrying like 12 plates. Then the plates fell off the person's hand. Broke on the floor. Pieces scattered everywhere. Maybe caught one or two people. The heart person will say, ah, um, are you okay? Why don't you just sit there? You people, be careful. Don't, don't step there so that you don't, you, it doesn't cut your leg. Ah, eh, yeah, she, wa, okay, she. Eh, 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 yeah, you know? The 
So person, the emotional one, will be looking at, you know, it's your character makeup that enlarges the kind of way you see things. The one who's the soul person is looking at the person whose leg or hand was caught and is being say, ah, hey, ah, 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 she's, ah, she's bleeding, she's bleeding. That's the highly emotional person. It's one event, too, but see how four people are looking at it. Then the mind person, the logical person is saying in the corner of his mind, ah, uh, 12 plates, 14,000. Ah, 14,000 loti lo bayo. In fact, oh, we are 24, Laura. 12 to 4. One event, <laughs> four people. The last person, the person of strength, will just say, okay, okay, you come. Oh, yeah, sit down here. Oh, yeah, Elo bayi. He's taking leadership role. He's just all energy. He's not even considering whether he steps on it. Now, f- go back to our three types of Anger positions. Like I said, the first person will tell you his mind. Whether the person forgives you or doesn't is based on these four character traits. The second type of anger position, this one will not tell you his mind. But when you look at the person's body language, you self will know. Person is just like, you said something, you know. The person might even be breathing. Or if it's... <laughs> Pretty much like I used to be. I've tried to change my wife. I'll just be frowning at home. <laughs> that is is not an accurate picture. Then the last category, this is the one that is um, very deadly. This kind of person will keep a straight face. You've broken their spirit. You've really destroyed them with the thing they did. They won't utter a word. Some of them will even smile through it. But the state of their hearts, they are taking you to heart. They have vowed, ah, ah. Jesus will, will come first and rapture will happen before I will talk to this person. Now, with all of this, you know, there was talking about Simeon and uh, Levi. He said that a curse will be on you. And you will not go very far because of this curse because you've not been flexible enough to let people go. You know, Pastor D preached about forgiveness some um, weeks ago. In fact, when he preached that message, let me be truthful to you. I say, in my mind, Pastor D, leave that in. Because why I said that, I'll explain. Uh, I recently had a battle in December with my siblings, um, my four senior sisters. I'm the last one, an only boy. So one of them really, really broke my spirit. And I actually vowed a vow. I said, I, I forgive me now. That's as I the message. If I pastor this is a spiritual man, I will lie because God gave him the message for the hour. I forgive me now. But I said that, in fact, I was telling a friend when we were talking about the thing, I said, ah, this, why are you taking this matter so seriously? I said that it will take an angel that's colored in green. <laughs> <laughs> and they will have, the angel will have six wings, as in, it will, be, it will have to be something unusual before, that God will use to come and tell me, let this go, before I let it go. So when he gave that message, I even went to go and meet a, one of our strong sisters in church. I was telling her, ah, uh, sister, see what pastor said, back bay. Okay, fast track. I was somewhere quiet at home. I was asking God. I had a crisis that was life-threatening. I needed some things urgently. I told God, usually if I'm going to have a conversation with God, I'll first of all settle down, gather my thoughts. Need to be clear about what I want. Pen it down. Then me and God will start our conversation. So I told God, I need X and Y. If you don't help me, I'm finished. Then, God had to bring this issue up. He said, eh, I will do it. I'm your God. But, go and make up with your sisters. Hey. 
So which kind of useless condition is this now? <sighs> One of those days, in fact, Mother's Day, yeah. I uh, prayed, 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 tried to pray it away. I know what it felt like when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> I couldn't pray it away. So Mother's Day, I, I thought it was a good opportunity to use that window. You know, Mother's Day, you call women, pay for them, because all of them, they have children. They are this, you know, that, uh, all the labor over your child. God, we honor you, remember it. So I just used that umbrella to, to hide under. I called, she didn't pick. So I sent a message. The prayer was deep. So when she read the prayer, she called almost five minutes after. We didn't even go into what had happened. We didn't even go into our vex for each other. Started telling me about her job, challenges she's facing, her, this, her boss is trying to sack. We spoke for an hour. That issue just died a natural death. True to his word, last week, I was in the office. Then I was just telling my boss, our MD, that X, Y, Z, matter of life and death, but uh, i like if you can help me, sir. He didn't answer. The day after, he sent someone to call me. Go to the office. He said, the manner in which you are asking for this thing is not the manner. I give it to you as a free will gift. It didn't end there. He had one of his uh, influential friends. Uh, they, I had gone. They called me back again. They said, go and call him. Because that influential friend was asking that, what is it that you just did? And why did you do what you did for this? But he explained. The person said, ah, he wants to be a part of it. Come on, no, surely. The person called me. The same exact thing he did, that person duplicated it. So when God is saying that for your wrath and your anger, you will be stuck. Something you need to watch out for. Let's go to the last one. Joseph. Remember our title, Things You Need to Watch Out For. Let's go to King James Version, verse 22 to 25. I want to give you a background on this young man so that we can pray effectively. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well. Whose branches run over the wall? Okay. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. 24. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. You know, this uh, young man, whenever I read about him, he always catches my attention. So many interesting things about him. You know, God had showed him in the early part of his life details of his future. Now, two things that God is interested in doing for all of us is giving us details of our future. He will either give you picture images of what he wants to do in your life or where he's taking you to or he will do something dramatic so that he can sort of like catch your attention so that he can make you start thinking along certain lines that you were not thinking before. Now, two examples of this dramatic type. I'm going somewhere. We're looking at a background into Joseph. Uh, Paul was going on his way to Damascus. Paul did not really send God, did not believe God at all. Then a light shone from heaven. We know the story. The, the light shone and knocked him off his horse. Then he spoke to him, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? When he heard this voice, you know, this made Paul aware that God is real. You know, the challenge with a lot of Christians is, can God do this? They say, yes, he can. Do you believe that he can do this? Yes, he can. When it comes to appropriating it to yourself, 
He will now start saying that these things, these things the pastor said as he was prophesying. Hey, well, one day, sir, it will happen. So in the corner of your mind, you don't really believe God is real. Paul came to this point with this dramatic experience. Ah, uh -uh, is it normal? You're riding on a horse. Light shines. Knocks you off. You that have been beating your chest, you could categorically say, God is not real. After that, Paul now made a statement to God. He said, ah, Jesus, what would you have me do? He surrendered. I'd be surrendered instantly. There was no controversy about the issue, about the existence of God. Jesus said to him that you cannot kick against the pricks. In essence, if you see those trees uh, in some farms, those trees that have pines, um, those shuk shuk, when Jesus is saying that, you, you, if you are trying to use your leg or your hands to break that kind of little tree down, it will be difficult because all the pines would have hurt you badly. So when Jesus was, what he was saying in essence is that it's impossible to defeat the church. That's the kind of family you belong to. It's impossible to be defeated. It's impossible for your life not to experience a turnaround. It's impossible for it to be over for you. Totally impossible. Jesus let Paul know in very, in a parable that you cannot defeat the church. So maybe the enemy has attacked your life so much. You are suddenly believing that, uh, is God, can God really help me? I'm sure that as we get to the end of this story, by his grace, you will reconsider this area in your life in Jesus' name. The second example of dramatic experience was with Moses and the burning bush. Someone was going his way peacefully. Like I said, God will do something dramatic so that he can catch your attention, so that he can redirect your mind to begin to consider some things you were not considering before. This bush was burning. He saw a tree burning, but it didn't catch fire. Like a paradox. So that made him turn aside because... He wanted to know why that was happening. And when he got there, God told him, the affliction of my people has come to my ears. Uh, and I'm sending you to go and deliver them. God now gave Moses clear details of his future. There's a purpose God has for your life, everyone in here, this morning. It is critical that you discover it. It is critical that you discover it. Because if you look at this same Moses, somewhere earlier on, that, the way I described now the burning bush was Exodus 3, Exodus 2. I was reading it again yesterday. I was just trying to follow the thoughts pattern that God was giving me. He said in verse 11, 2, 11, now it came to pass in those days that he, Moses, went out to his brethren, that's the Hebrews. He was a prince in Egypt, but he went out to his brethren because he knew his actual lineage. Then he looked at their burdens, and he was bothered. Then he now saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew person. So he got very upset that, why will he be treating him like that? He killed him and hid the person's body. Now the thing there is, he had an idea about what the details of what God wanted to do in his life. But he was carrying it out with the arm of flesh. You have to ask him regularly, what's the reason for my existence? It's a thought pattern you have to have with God and a conversation you have to have with him. Why did you give me birth? There must be a reason. Life is beyond eating and drinking and making money. Life is beyond all of that. God designed us for something. Discover it. And depend on the manufacturer for maximal benefit. For the purpose which he designed you for. Like a Lamborghini. You can drive a Lamborghini on a Lagos road. You can get the best out of it. If you don't read the manual, you are underutilizing that car. Because the manufacturer designed it for speed. But when you read the manual, you will get the best and you'll get the maximum value from your life. 
And that manual is only God that can give you the details about that. He wants to be thoroughly involved in our lives. That's God. He wants us to understand the kingdom. And he wants us to understand the bigger family we belong to. Let me digress here again. God wants us to understand the bigger family. You are part of a biological family, right? Yeah. But you belong as you are in Christ to a bigger family. Let's look at something in Ephesians chapter 3. Can we put it on the transparency? Verse 14 and 15. I saw that scripture some years ago. It was mind-blowing. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. When I read word, I like analyzing it. I said to myself the day I read this thing. So, that means God has given me his name. So, that means I'm part of a bigger family. That means I'm part of one of the most powerful families in the world. That should affect your thinking whenever you enter any issue, whenever you face crisis, whenever you are in a difficult spot. I keep, sometimes I'm worshiping and I just tell him, I, I bow unto you. Jehovah, my father, I'm, I, I'm your child. So I just start having conversations that's like a subset or a branch from the understanding of this scripture. You need to understand what the family stands for. You need to understand the economic, economics of the family. You need to understand the access to the throne you have in that family. You need to understand your privileges as being part of that family. You need to understand your rights as being part of that family. Let me give an illustration here. Let's say the king of England, powerful uh, entity, now adopts you as a son or daughter. Now adopts you and brings you into their home. When they adopt you, because your mind has not fully grasped or acclimatized to what has happened, sometimes you don't feel like you are part of something bigger. But by that adoption, you have already been made part of something bigger. Sometimes you just feel like uh, I don't even know what to happen. They are eating food. They gather delicacies. You see how you see in all these movies, all these uh, medieval uh, times adventure. You see, I see those people they, they like food plenty. You see grapes, you see chicken like 10, you see everything. Then they'll bring you that has been adopted. You will just take one leg of chicken and just put because you are not feeling like you are a part of this. And what happens when this is your mindset? You will not exactly be impacted like God wants. Your life will not be changed the way He wants. You will find that your life is not going forward as much as He wants. You will find that you are not moving to a higher level. You will find that the resources that you have available for you to develop your life, you won't utilize it. The resources you have to expand your dreams, you also won't utilize it. As, an, uh, as part of this illustration, I said, a friend will now visit you. And we come, who knew you when you were in Mushi, before you were adopted? The friend now comes and visits you and is saying to you, oh boy, how far now? Say, I'm managing. The guy will say, eh? You say what? I'm struggling, bro. You are what? Not be you, king adopt. He say, honestly, I don't know where my life is going. In fact, the boss will tell you, if being in that house is a description of not knowing where your life is going, me, I don't want to know where my life is going. Because he cannot fathom, he cannot understand what is running in your mind. You are part of a bigger family. I'm trying to expand that scripture that we read. I bow my knees to the Father of heavenly light who has named me as part of his family. Let your mindset change based on this from today. You need to understand the kingdom. You need to understand how the kingdom of God operates. You need to understand the advantages you have as being a member as far as you are in Christ, oh, Christ Jesus. You are a member of this family. Moses had an idea of his purpose. Not in details. The only problem, like I said earlier, was he wanted to execute it through the arm of flesh. 
Joseph, the same thing, had an idea of his purpose. You know, the story, I'm not going to go into all of it. Um, he dreamt, saw some sheaves and his own sheaf. Then the other sheaves were bowing down to his sheaf. I will read one other part when he dreamt the second dream. Let's open Genesis 37, verse 9, 10, and 11. Genesis 37. Verse 9 says, Then he dreamt another dream and told it to his brothers. And he said, This time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed. So he told it to his father. His father rebuked him and said, What is this you are saying? Shall your mother and I and your brothers come to bow on the earth before you? His brothers envied him. But his father took it to heart. His father, I love that father. Oh, ah, parents, yeah, please, you need to be really spiritual. You remember I started by saying life is very spiritual. His son spoke and his father's spirit identified with what the son said. He knew that it's God that showed him that picture. That's why the father could confidently say that. So are you trying to say that you will reach, attain this level of greatness that both me, your mom, and your brother. But the brothers, they don't want to hear Small boy, last boy, uh, what are you saying? The, after this, the father now did something, made a mistake. I call it a mistake. The father had seen that there were leadership, um, he had leadership traits. And that maybe God was also trying to say that he will eventually enter a role of leadership. But the father prematurely threw him into that. The father now said, oh yeah. Go and see your brothers in the field. They are whatever. Go and check on them. Go and oversee what they are doing. Mistake. Someone that they already hated. So when he got there, they saw him coming from afar. They now plan. See the dreamer. The one that said, he go pass us. Let him come. When he came, they were actually going to kill their brother. Envy is a very, very bad spirit. Jealousy is worse. They are ready to keep. But Reuben stood in for him. They now sold him. Cut a long story short. They sold him. He ended up in Potiphar's house as a houseboy. Now, I want to give you the background. That's why we're going back into this Joseph story. I believe Joseph at this point engaged God in a conversation. Which is what we need to start learning to do when we're going through a difficult patch or a crisis. And I guess this is the conversation that would have gone on with him. You said you will make me great. I know the dreams you showed me. And I trust you, Lord. Have your way in my life. That's a private conversation Joseph had with the Lord, even though they had sold him home and he was a houseboy. Now, what was interesting is that in this houseboy role, the Bible says that um, Potiphar made him overseer of his entire, I have never in all my life, oh, we don't get houseboys since they bomb me. Never seen where there will be a houseboy and the owner of the house will give him oversight of the entire house, how the cars run, uh, how to buy the food, full management of the house when he has a wife there. If I was almost like he overramped the wife and gave Joseph full, yeah, because this was somebody who fully believed the God who spoke to him and believed in the picture that that God showed him about his future. And he had told that God that even when he was sold, he, be, he refused to be dissuaded. I wrote here, he believed God would do something great with his life, even with all the crazy things that had happened up to that point. He believed God could make something out of his life. I'm saying to someone here this morning, God can make something out of your life. And God will make something out of your life in the name of Jesus. One thing you must have at the back of your mind, nothing must change that belief system in your mind. That God can make something out of your life. Joseph didn't allow circumstance to take that out of his mind. Because of his belief system, even as a houseboy, he was unusually blessed. He says in verse 39, 4. Yes, I wrote it. I actually wrote the scripture out. So Joseph found favor in Potiphar's sight 
and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all he had he put under his authority. That's like a special advisor to a president, house boy. Because of his belief system about his God, that was the trigger. Then the woman caught a fast track again. She tried, she wanted to use him up. He said, Kojo. Then she finished him. <laughs> he ended up in prison. At this stage, you, let's make with reason now. Your brothers almost killed you. God had been telling you twenty and twenty about your future. Then you entered uh, Potiphar's house as a houseboy. They're blessing you there again. Then the woman there messed you up. Then you ended up in prison. If now you, and concerning what God has been telling you, you'll be great, you'll be high, you'll be climb, you'll be some assault. Will your mind still be uh, processing those things? Will your mind still be... Uh, so at this point, some, a normal person would have said, man, Bob's forget you. But Joseph did not budge you. Interesting young man. Any normal person would have given up and concluded and said, everything God said to me is a lie. We all have these challenges. Some of us go through difficult seasons in life. For some of us, we are going from one crisis to another. For some of us, life has never balanced in the last couple of years. For some of us, you are always uh, with the ladies. Why am I always meeting wrong guys? But God, I serve you. It could be, why is my business always facing setbacks? But God, I'm faithful. That's, I'm just trying to paint parallels of the kind of mind that Joseph would have had and the kind of things he had gone through. Look at me, for instance. I wrote as a clause there. What do you want me to say? Me. Brother Abbey, 17 years married, no child. In fact, 17 years married, no child, two IVFs. The second one was the most painful one because the embryo had already started forming in her. Then all of a sudden, after four weeks, it collapsed. What do you want me to say? What do you want Joseph to say? The question to you this morning is what are you saying as you are going through your crisis? I had a sister, my immediate senior, 14 years married. In school, she was the head of fellowship. Uh, when she initially married, she and her husband, they had a, a couple's retreat for, they blessed so many married lives. At the end of the day, I started beating her, terrible wife beating for seven years, up until the 14th year. In fact, the last beating he gave her, ripped her dress till her bra and underwear were showing. She had to run out of the house. She entered the street, took a bus like that. Just so that he won't beat her to death. Did she conclude that God does not exist? No. Right now, I think she has a ministry where she's helping women who are going through difficult patches in their marriages. Another thing to take note. We are beginning to close. Always engage God in whatever you are going through. Because he is your lifeline. He is your, not Davido's Choma Assurance. He is your assurance that you can go through life and come out well. Joseph did the same. He checked his life regularly. He checked it. He found, ah, I've been dreaming dreams. Those dreams are accurate. I will dream something about somebody. And when I interpret it, that's actually what happens. So he got confidence. There was a, a part in the prison, uh, because of time, let's leave that, Genesis 40. He said the butler and the, um, the other, yeah, they caught beer, thank you. They dreamt a dream. Then one day he came, he said he noticed that their countenance was sad. So when they now, he said, what's up now? I said, uh, this is what we dreamt. Then he said to them, I think his response was, that is God not the interpreter of dreams? See the same Joseph who, that had been through Bege, see the confidence level. He was telling another person who was going through hell that, uh -uh, are you trying to tell me God can't help you out? 
he had not lost confidence in his God. In fact, his skills had grown so confidently that he was trying to tell them, okay, tell me the dream. He was not so sure of his dreaming at the start, but now he was confident about it. What we have as a side note here is, as you serve God aggressively, God will expose you to your gifts. God will expose you to your talents. God will expose you to your skills like he did with Joseph. Joseph was confident in his abilities. Joseph believed God was real, even with all he had been through. Now, the question to everybody this morning, as we begin to close, is this. What are you getting from your life? Or your life's journey? Is it pain you are reading? Is it condemnation you are reading? Is it that my life is useless, that you have read from your life journey? Or could it be that from your life journey you are reading purpose? From your life journey, you are reading fulfillment. From your life's journey, you are reading that I'm in a better, stronger relationship with God. Like God said to me, um, tell them in my university years, he said to me that I will use your life to jumpstart men into their God-given destinies. I believed what he told me. He started giving me a picture from university of what he had called me to do. When you jump start a car, you push it, then the car finds its own momentum. I prayed on that for years. And we, I even started an NGO. It ran for a few years. Lovely. We did so much. Touched so many lives. It ended up closing. I was disappointed, grieved. But now I made up my mind that I would just simply put my life in his hands. Whatever direction he wants to carry it to, who? Whatever he wants me to do, oh, oh, in whatever capacity he wants me, oh, let him do what he does best. Now we'll do a recap before we pray. Things to take note of. One, God is always speaking. Two, be a burden bearer. Be sincerely concerned about others. Three, a man who is given to anger stands the chance of his life being stuck or slowed down. Four, there is a purpose God has for your life. It is critical that you discover it. Five, nothing must change your belief system that God can make something out of your life. Six, always engage God in whatever you are going through. He is your lifeline. Seven, what are you getting out of your life's journey? Is it pain? Is it uselessness? Or is it purpose and fulfillment? Let's open that scripture again. That's what we're going to use to pray. Genesis 49 verse 22 to 25. Can we put it on the screen please? Can we jump to 23? The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. As the father spoke prophecy over Joseph, God was telling Joseph through his father's mouth that you have been through a lot. That's what it means when they have shot at you. The enemy has shot at you and grieved you so. But he said, in spite of that, your bow abode in strength. That's why I had to give you a background so that you will pray accurately. And the arms... Of your hands. The father was saying that this is what God is telling you. That God will place his hand on your hand. So that whatever project. Whatever business. Whatever you commit to his hands. And you tell him that God for this thing I'm about to do. Let your hands rest upon my hands. You will see great things. I say this example in closing. I, as I started this. My current job. It threw me into the deep end. A very huge project, joint partnership with Lagos State to build a very large estate. For me, that has been a project manager for years, I'm not a civil engineer. I didn't, as at that time, know anything about buildings. I was terrified. I was scared. Even my boss 
That was his first huge, that was his biggest project also. I have known this scripture for years. This is the scripture. Do you know when that project finished, I went back to the site. And I stood there and I looked up. And I told him, you kept your word. Because I told him, I'm about starting something I know nothing about. I'm about starting something I'm not equipped for. I'm about starting something I don't, I don't, I don't even know how I'm going to do it. But God, let your hand rest on my hand. Oh, the God of Jacob, who will be my help? And he kept his word to the letter. I got to a point, first year, they thought all the meetings will have the consultants. Who is this idiot? Just talking things that do not make sense. As at the second year of the project, I had read things, I had seen experiences, I had asked questions, I had gone for many courses. They would come and I would say, I'm sorry, I beg to differ, consultant. Talking with, they will now say, hmm, I looked at myself, hey, you know, still law school, civil. But we have a great God. Shall we rise up on our feet? I'm going to speak to the Lord this morning. You've heard so many things. Process them as you pray. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Praise. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Are you, Lord? Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you sing great. Great are you, Lord, ready to be praised, ready to be praised, Father, you Greatly to be praised. Let's sing it to him one more time. Father, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you You spoke to Paul when you knocked him off the horse. If you have something to do in my life, make it clear to me. Speak to him this morning. Make it clear to me. Why was I born? What's the reason for my existence? Oh God, give me details. Give me clarity. Like you did with Moses. You caught his attention with the burning bush because you wanted to tell him what you have called him for. Speak to the Lord this morning. That thing you want to use my life for. That thing you want to use my life for. Speak to me, Lord. Over the next couple of days, reveal to me. Even if it's in a dream, if you will speak audibly, if you will send a prophet, speak to me, Lord. He said, where the Spirit of God is, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18, there is liberty. Speak to the Lord this morning, that your Spirit dwells with me. So I'm asking for freedom in this area. What are those things that you're battling? Tell him this morning, according to that word. He said, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Give me liberty from stagnation. Give me liberty from a hard life. Give me liberty for my life that's not going forward. Speak to him this morning. I call it to his word. Oh God, I ask for freedom this morning. Name Katalabolo Siketerelo. Where your spirit is, and your spirit dwells with me. I call to you, but my life does not make sense. Give me liberty this morning. 
Nengo Dora Batelego Lusa Tavala, Brenda Legate, Alaga Lusa, get a bossa, get a la Basa Tavala. I'm going to pray one last prayer. Genesis, he said that the arm of his arm will rest on my hand. What's that huge project you have? What's that thing you want God to really do? What's that situation you want him to get involved in? Uh, God, I want a, a situation where I will never be broke. Ask him to rest his hands upon your hands. Uh, ask him. All of shame, the power of Strengthen the arm of my arms. Oh, God. From this moment, that's what I ask. Ekotoye balata. No downtime again. Ekotu sen de rebo lo san de rebo golo soto. But my life will move. My life will move with speed. Echo by the hand of God, by the grace of God. Nekotolo ba seketebe la. Lembro ba 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 seketebe makila ha la 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 la. I ask him for your help, Almighty. Let to push this life forward. Let your hand rest upon my hand. I will not be confused. I will not be worn out. I will not be distressed. But I will experience the favor and the joy of God. Thank you, Lord. I tell him thank you this morning. For what you have done, I am sure, God, like with Joseph. We will experience your tangible presence. Uh, people will see your hand upon me. They will see your hand upon everything that I set my hand to do from today. That will be my experience. That will be my testimony. We thank you, Lord. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you, Lord, for that word. We ask, O oh God, grant all the grace to abide in your word. We ask, O oh God, that even as you have blessed us with your word this morning, we ask, O oh God, grant us the grace to be the dwell of your word. Help us, O oh God, to put our trust in you. Even with those things, O oh God, that you have proposed to do in our life, help us, O oh God, to put our trust in you, God, as the days go by in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we be seated? Um, before we take our offering, I would like to call on um, the Yaba Tech students. We want to pray for them for their exams. Please, I want you all to come forward. And I'd like to call on Sister Muji to commit them into the hand of God. Please, all your best tech students, can you please come forward? works in the flesh cannot please God. Anybody who works in the flesh cannot please God. To live in the spirit is to live. To live outside of the spirit is death. Lord, we take this moment as a spiritual exercise. Lord, we are not taking this as an ordinary exam. Within the space that we exist right now, Lord, this is spiritual. And for everything you see in the realm of the physical that you see manifested, 
a prototype of it had happened in the realm of the spirit. Father, the Bible says you should come to the throne of grace in time of need to ask for help. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring this, my brothers and sisters. Lord, I place them before you. Before you. And Lord, I ask for marvelous assistance. divine assistance superseding the physical Lord I pray that you make available to them in the name of Jesus whatever transaction or activities is happening within the realm of the physical now Father I ask that you turn them around and let them begin to speak in favor of these ones. In the mighty name of Jesus. For those who take life as spiritual. The product and the outcome you have will always be different. So Lord, Father. You are the owner of wisdom. Wisdom belongs to you. Comprehension belongs to you. Application belongs to you. Lord, I ask for this, my brothers and my sisters. The word of God is speaking over your life. And that word is superseding whatever has happened. Or whatever is happening. Or whatever has existed within your physical there is a new word, there is a word of God speaking about that, creating newness, creating new experience for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you place your hand on the hands of these ones. Let them come out successful in the name of Jesus. For those of them who have been threatened, they have threatened them. They told them, we'll see how you make it. Lord, man has spoken. But Father, we ask you to speak your word. The word that has an overriding effect over every situation. And over what any man has spoken. Lord, right here, when we are in the realm of the spirit, and everything that is negative on your life, on this exam, Father, we change it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we make a demand for divine assistance. Whether you need to bring in angels, whether you need to bring in people, Father, we make a demand for divine help. For this exam, for you, it will come in the name of Jesus. Amen. In a way you have never experienced help before. Help will come in the name of Jesus. Amen. In a way you have never seen or received help before. Help will come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, in every form beyond our imagination, Lord, let help come to these ones in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever combination, formula, environment, whatever needs to happen within the realm of the exams that these ones will be writing from tomorrow, Lord, we ask. That you influence the situation for their good. Amen. And in their favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those difficult subjects and courses. They are just asking for let my people go. Hmm. 
God will prove to you that he is God. Amen. He will prove to you that he is God. Amen. It will not be let my people go. Amen. You will not be able to explain it. Amen. You will find time, you will find reasons to explain it. You will not find. But God will show up for you. Amen. He will answer for you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It is the word of God where I superimposing upon your situation. That's all. Whatever men have said, whatever has been spoken, either from your house, other spiritual attack, whatever it is, we are creating a new reality by the word of God. And that new reality is your experience. And that is what you will have. And that is what will happen. And that's what we detect your experience and your reality in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless and appreciate you. Thank you very much. That we can always come and you always answer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, man. Shall we package our tithe and offering? Be on our feet, even as we declare the prosperity of our flow. Praise the Lord. Are we ready? Let's go. As I give my tithe and offering, I believe it all that, all that for heavens invading the earth, storehouses unlocked, miracles created and released, dreams and visions, angelic visitations. Declarations of faith, impartations, divine favor, divine manifestation, anointing, gifts and calling, position and promotions, provision and resources to reach the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father. But as I add out my faith, you will shower me favor, blessing, and increase of. So I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and to Jesus get his full and due reward. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, you are worthy. Savior, thou art worthy. Thou alone art worthy to be great. Now we know that we need to pray. Now we know that we need to pray. Now we know that we need to be praying. Kune kune nebe, kune kune nebe.
Father God, we bless you for another opportunity you are giving us to give this morning. We ask so God may be used for the furtherance of your work in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We ask so God as many that are giving this morning, we ask so God that your blessing will come upon our lives in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We ask so God as many that, are, that want to give that are not able to give. We ask so God that you bless them indeed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. The hand of God rest upon us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. Let's just be seated for just a brief announcement. Our Bible study continues 6 p.m. every Tuesday. Please, I want us to always prepare our hearts to study. It's a time for us to study the word of God. And may the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Um, on the 16th of this month, we'll be having our drama outreach. Our drama outreach will be coming up on the 16th of this month. I'd like us to pray along. Let's prepare our hearts. Let's invite people. We believe that God is going to use us to touch the life of this community in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And one more thing, our mother church in Badon. In Badon. The denomination is coming up um, starting from the 20th of this month. 20th through 24th. I want us to prepare our hearts. If you want to be part of it, just see Bra Tunde. Let's prepare our hearts even as we prepare in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Shall we be on our feet even as we close the meeting? And I want us to please, Technica, open this scripture, Psalm 121. I want us to declare this scripture even as we go into this new month. Psalm 121. Please, let's have it. I want you to read it from the bottom of your heart. And then as you go through this month, let this scripture be your watchword. I want us to declare it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let's go. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from where it cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord which made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth me will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve me from the all evil. He shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall preserve my going out and my coming in from this time forth even forevermore. Praise the Lord. Shall we just bless God this morning? Let's just bless God for another time. He has given us another opportunity. He has given us to spend in his presence this morning. I want you to just bless the name of the Lord. Just thank him for yet another opportunity he has given you this morning. Father, we want to bless you once again. Yet another opportunity you have given us to gather here this morning. We say, may your name be praised, O God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. As we go, O God, this week, O God, we ask, O God, that your blessing indeed, O God, will go before us. We declare, O God, that indeed, O God, preserve our going out and coming in, O God, in Jesus' name. We declare, O God, that your favor, O God, as we look up to you as our help, your favor, O God, will come upon us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We ask, oh God, that it will be well with us, oh God, throughout this month, oh God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. For we pray in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace and fellowship? The love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in God's presence forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.